Example 85. Lengths of pregnancies are normally distributed with a mean of 268 days and a standard deviation of 15 days. Find the probability of a woman carrying for a term of at least 308 days. This problem was motivated by a Dear Abby letter that um, had come in, I assume, sometime after World War II because the case that it involved was a sailor returning from the Pacific Theater of the War and he found his wife was home pregnant. And the problem was he hadn't been home in 10 months, so he figured that if he had impregnated his wife, she would have had the child you know, after about nine months, and the fact that it was 10 months and she was still pregnant made him suspect that she was unfaithful to him. So at that time, there's no DNA evidence to rely on, so what they did is to look at probability, the likelihood that she would carry for the length of term that she would have had to carry in order to still be pregnant by the time he returned from the war. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem in terms of what we need to do to solve it. This phrase, normally distributed, the fact that it says lengths of pregnancies are normally distributed, that means we should draw a bell curve. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a bell curve for the problem because that's where we'll do our work. Okay, so we've drawn a bell curve. Remember that the two axes here, one will be labeled with a center at zero, the other will be labeled with a mean of 268. All right, so those two means are placed on the curve. And what we want to do from there is to look at the number they gave me in the problem. And it says that we want to carry for a term of 308 days. So we place the mean for pregnancy lengths on the curve. 308 would be to the right of that. So I'll place that on the curve next and draw a line where that 308 is located. Then from there, there's a standard deviation. That standard deviation is given as 15 days. So we're going to put 15 up here in the corner just so I don't have to keep referring back to the paragraph there to get the numbers I need for the rest of the problem. All right, so now what we want to do is figure out what area on this drawing we're looking for. Well, it says the probability that the woman would carry for a term of at least 308 days, at least. So what does at least mean? If I said you need at least a C in this class to pass, that means what? You need a C or higher, right? So saying at least 308 days means 308 days, 308 days or higher. So I'm going to shade to the right because that represents 308 days or more. Okay, and then from there, we would need to convert this into a z-score in order to look that up on the z-chart. We can't look up 308 because it's not a z-score value. It's a pregnancy length. So to do that, we're going to convert it into a z-score. All right, so let's do that quickly. Remember the z-score formula. It's x minus the mean over sigma. And so, of course, for us, that's going to mean that the z-score will be 308, the score we want to convert, minus the mean of 268, right? The mean there in the center of our drawing, divided by the standard deviation, which we have there, that's 15. Okay, so once we have all that filled in, our next step is to do the arithmetic involved. 308 minus 268, that's 40 on top. It'll be divided by 15. 15 will go in there evenly twice, right? And it'll go in there twice, but leave 10 left over. So you'll have 10 over 15. That's the same as 2 thirds. So that'll be 0.6. And then we'll have 7 here, 0.67. Now it's important that you round off to two decimal places because that's how our z-chart works. It only has two decimal places after the decimal point on the chart. It's also important that you round properly. Some people, you know, when you work this out with a calculator, it'll give you 2.6 repeating, and they will just sometimes look up 2.66. That means they didn't round properly because since the next number is a six, we should round that six up to a seven here. And uh, if you don't do that properly, of course, you're gonna get a different area and with a different area, you'll have a different answer. So you wanna be careful to round normally for these problems. All right, so now that we have the 2.67, I'll place that here because that's what this is, right? That's the z-score version of 308. Now, if we actually look this up, what we'll be doing is this. We're trying to find the probability that the length of a pregnancy, which we'll call x, is greater than or equal to 308 days. Remember that the equal to part here doesn't really matter because it's a continuous distribution. So if we just wrote greater than, it's actually the same thing. Um, technically, the problem does imply greater than or equal to, but ultimately, 308 days has, you know, to be precisely pregnant for 308 days is got zero probability. So whether you include that equal sign or not, it makes no difference. But this is equivalent to finding the probability that your z-score is greater than or equal to 2.67, right? Because 2.67 is in the same location on the chart as 308. All right, so if we figure out that by looking it up on the z-chart, we'll have our answer. 
So let's go to the chart now. Let's look up this 2.67. But remember, when you look it up, you're actually going to find the area from here to here, correct? That's not the area we want, so we'll need to do a little arithmetic to find this tail area at the end. So let's go look up 2.67 and see what we get. Okay, so we're looking to find 2.67. So let's scroll the table down until we see 2.6. And then in that 2.6 position, we can see that we're going to go 2.6012345678. We get the value 0.4962. So that's the number in the 2.67 position, 0.4962. Okay, so we found the answer 0.4962. That was the number we found when we looked up 2.67. From there, we're going to find the area in the tail. And the way that's going to work is very simple. We're going to say, look, the whole area here in the half of the curve is 0.5. If we subtract from 0.5 that 0.4962, Two, it should give us the leftover amount that's in this little tail area. So if I subtract these two numbers, I'll get the area in the tail. So remember, if you're looking for the tail area, always subtract the answer from the table from 0.5. And when you're done with this, you'll get 0.0038. Isn't that correct? And if that's correct, then that's the area in the tail. And it's also the area for our question here, the answer for our question. So ultimately, we're going to say that this is approximately 0.0038 which is the same as 0.38%, right? 0.38%. So it seems to be a pretty small chance, right? A pretty small likelihood that a woman would carry for that length of time if this mean and standard deviation is correct. However, even though that's true that for one individually selected woman, it's unlikely that she carries for this long, the other thing to think about though is that, you know, in a large population of women who could become pregnant, there would still be a sizable number of them who um, had this condition where they carried a child for this length of time. For example, in a place where you had a million um, you know, potentially pregnant women, you know, so a population like New York City might have, or there might be a, a million women of childbearing age in that time. You know, if you multiply this by a million, you get 3,800 women. So 3,800 women would carry a child for this length of time. So even relatively small percents can produce a large number of people with the condition because we have such a huge population of human beings on the earth. So as far as I'm concerned, it's kind of inconclusive whether she was unfaithful or not. Yes, this probability seems rare, but at the same time, you know, given the circumstances in history at that time, a sailor who comes home and can't be certain that his wife was faithful because he wasn't there, might tend to think a woman who carries a child for a long length of time is a cheater. And uh, you know, maybe if he had been home and noticed that she got pregnant at a certain date and did indeed carry for the length of time, 308 days, he wouldn't be questioning her fidelity. So in the end, I would say in a court of law, this would not be strong enough evidence, but um, it certainly is an unusual probability. It's small, in other words, right? Less than 1%. So anyways, that's the answer to the question. We found the area for the tail, which is the area we were looking for, and that's the probability a woman would carry for a term of at least 308 days.